Okay, so do you guys remember that one Facebook movie that came out like 13 years ago and won a bunch of awards and people really liked it? Do I smoke meat? Smoking meat. Smoking these meat. No, 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 no. Not that one. The other one. The red capes are coming. <laughs> what the fu- No! The other one. You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. Okay, finally. Th this is the one I was talking about. The rest of my attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where my colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. All right, so that's the social network, right? It came out in 2010. It was a big hit. A lot of people liked it. It was very well received. It won a bunch of Oscars. Flash forward 13 years later, what if I were to tell you that there were not one, but two films released this year that are both sort of spiritual siblings of that trailblazing Fincher masterpiece? Of course, I'm referring to Tetris and Blackberry. One which released on Apple TV, and the other which grossed a measly $2 million at the box office before entering streaming. Both of them tackling underdog themes of tech innovation, bookended by nostalgia and politics, and really engaging performances. Tetris is, well, an impossible film to make. So they didn't make it. Instead, they made a movie about the Tetris patent and licensing drama between the U.S. and Russia in the 80s. Blackberry deals with similar story beats, but rather than leaning into the absurdity of it all, as Tetris does, this film is much more grounded and hyper-focused on the corporate minutia and evolving and complex psychology of all the players involved. In that sense, Blackberry sticks the social network Steve Jobs dramatic landing a bit more firmly, whereas Tetris is riding a slightly more twisted and colorful wave of nostalgia, with its small-scale globe-trotting shenanigans taking center stage. However, Tetris does have its moments of introspection and, at times, deeply emotional distillations of the human condition. This is especially the case when dealing with some of the more brutal aspects of how the Soviet Union behaved towards literally everyone in the movie. Now, it could be effectively argued that the social network essentially pioneered this biopic tech icon subgenre, with films like Jobs, and then Steve Jobs following closely after, and now Blackberry. Yeah, you could draw similarities between other films satirizing the insert capitalist industry here, like Moneyball, or The Big Short, or The Founder, or The Wolf of Wall Street. But there's something unique about these three films that separates them from the rest. I think it mostly has to do with the viewer's perspective and benefit of hindsight on the tech industry, and the satisfaction we get from watching a bunch of naive nerds just happen upon groundbreaking technology and intellectual property. At least for me, I can't help but notice a perpetual smirk on my face during this scene, for example. There's free internet in this room right now. Mm -hmm. It's like the force. Sorry, have you seen Star Wars? Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? And then there's this scene from Tetris. It's always been bugging me. Why can't both lines disappear at once instead of one at a time? Uh, because, uh, I never thought of that. <laughs> See what I mean? It's just very entertaining to watch them stumble their way into something we take for granted in modern society. In that sense, I imagine a biopic like Oppenheimer might trigger similar reactions regarding discovery of technology we are all too familiar with today, although with much more dire consequences. Now, another thing I wanted to address is that there's this awkward Oscar bait label that looms over many of these dramatic biopics. And I think we all sort of understand the implications there. Many of these films explore very serious subject matters and are often portraying real life events and real people attempting to recreate historical moments that really happened. And it can all seem very calculated and manipulative and predictable at times. And then there's this more pretentious sort of angle where studios are much more inclined to produce films like Elvis or Rocket Man, which rely on star power and often very well-known dramatizations and complicated celebrities to achieve their powerful and desired effect on the audience, which inevitably leads us back to these feelings of manipulation and melodramatic emphasis on these already very familiar icons. And while some of these films are great, don't get me wrong, 
I thought Gary Oldman was a fantastic Winston Churchill in The Darkest Hour, but Bohemian Rhapsody was such an editing disaster, and some of these late Tom Hanks films have been poorly executed and just sort of mid, and it's just hard for me to really care about this kind of storytelling anymore. But then I saw Tetris, and was honestly blown away by its originality and creativity. And I'm thinking, why can't we take more fun risks like this more frequently? This feels exciting and new, and the main character isn't a degenerate weirdo, and the plot doesn't revolve around already well-documented events, and everything just seems fresh and has great energy and doesn't take itself too seriously. If I'm being honest though, Blackberry has the better performances. Jay Baruchel, I think I'm pronouncing that right, leans so hard into this character, I was honestly shocked by it. This guy has delivered some excellent comedic performances, but I just wasn't expecting this. To be honest, I wasn't expecting the movie to be so compelling either. This is about the Blackberry, okay? It might as well have been about the HD DVD versus Blu-ray battle in 2006. Uh, but you know, Sony, every PlayStation 3 has a Blu-ray. You talking to me this whole time? I, I was talking to whoever was listening. Christ, man. I just don't give a shit about it. But somehow I ended up caring a lot about the various dilemmas in the film. It's hard to explain if you haven't seen it, so again I'm going to point to The Social Network as a point of comparison. The psychology of the characters propels the film forward for me. Yes, it's fun to examine the various friendship betrayals and exploitative tech startup drama, and both of these films offer a balanced combination of humor and tragedy, but the performances and the writing are so singular and effective and nuanced that before you know it, you're heavily invested in the lives of these people and you almost want the movie to slow down and take even more of its time to tell the story. Now, I could go on and on about why these films are both excellent and why you should support them and watch them if you haven't already, but this wasn't meant to be an in-depth analysis, rather more of a brief state of the biopic reaction essay. And honestly, I think the less I say about these movies, the more you'll probably enjoy them. I don't really want to hype them up more than I need to, but if I'm being honest, both of them are in my top five of the year currently, and I think if you enjoyed the social network, then these are definitely worth your time. But really, I just hope that Hollywood can somehow find a way to continue funding these kinds of films. I mentioned this in the beginning of my video, but Tetris was released exclusively on Apple TV. And with the writer's strike going on right now, and with the actors joining the strike as of a few days ago, I just hope that these studios are paying attention here and hopefully noticing that a $5 million budget movie about the Blackberry starring that Tropic Thunder guy is actually a worthwhile endeavor. And honestly, overall, there's some decent based on a true story films right now circulating. Sound of Freedom is doing really well at the box office. And last year's 13 Lives became one of the highlights of the year, in my opinion. Seriously, go watch 13 Lives. It's super underrated. If you haven't seen it, it's just a really good movie about that 2018 Thailand soccer team rescue mission with some great performances by Colin Farrell and Viggo Mortensen. And with that, if you like the video, consider subscribing and leaving a like or comment. But thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.